Hello and welcome to consultraining.com's time coding in Graname 2 tutorial. Uh, this has been created in version 3.1 uh, and is an update to a previous video that we recorded a couple of years ago. In this first video, well part one of two, we're going to be running through connection. The setup that we're running today is a three application setup using internal MIDI. So we're using Reaper uh, for playback, an application called Loop BE1 for essentially creating a virtual MIDI device between the two applications and then our GranMA2 on PC. Uh, we'll run through essentially two ways of doing it on PC, but if you are looking at doing uh, time coding into the actual console or straight into a wing, you'd be needing to use the MIDI devices on the back. So if we were doing MIDI on a console, which is the bottom image, you would be using the two MIDI uh, connectors that are numbered number 10. If you're using a on PC command wing, it will be the two MIDI connectors that are beside the DMX out connectors. Let's begin. So here we have Reaper. We've already inserted an audio track, which we can play back. Like that. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to time code or add some time code to it. So we're going to do a couple of things before we add our time code in. The first thing I like to do when dealing with timecode is change that from uh, measures and beats to just minutes and seconds, just so it's easy to deal with. What I also like to do is I also like to give about two seconds of pre-roll for the timecode before the music actually kicks in. Obviously, depending on your timecode project, this may not always be possible, but this at least gives you a little bit of time, especially if you're running an endless show, for the system to get resynchronized. So once we've got our audio in place, uh, we're going to insert a track. We're going to go to Insert, SMPTE, LTC, MTC timecode generator. And the first thing it's going to want to do is put it in on your audio track, which is not what we want. We want it to be below it to create its own track. And all I did there was just drag it down. The next thing we need to do is just stretch this out. And we're going to make this 2 minutes 40 long. So slightly longer than the song. Then when we play it, what we're going to hear is a hideous noise. Are you ready for the hideous noise? Mmm, <coughs> tasty time code. Now that's not what we want. Unless it is exactly what you want. So... Here's where our tutorial sort of splits in two. If we were going to do a really tight, easy uh, time code thing to use out on the road, what you might want to do is you might want to pan your audio to the left and your time code to the right and then export it out onto a iPod or iPhone or something similar. That way you can take a 3.5 cable to dual XLR, plug one into a speaker and the other one into the LTC uh, point on the back of a console. So let's go back to our console images. Uh, beside the DMX in on the on PC wing is an LTC input, which we can plug LTC, which is linear time code in, or on the back of the console where it's numbered number 12 is your LTC input, uh, not your audio input. Uh, but in our tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to do MIDI time code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to route it. So by clicking on the little routing icon, we can change it to loop BE. And if loop BE isn't there, we need to go to options, preferences, MIDI devices, and make sure that it is in fact enabled, which it is. Uh, let's do a quick reset of that. And there it is. So I'm not sure why it wasn't there, uh, but now it is. So we're all good. But there you go, if something doesn't appear, so if we go to routing and your MIDI output doesn't appear, this would also be, if you were using external MIDI hardware, like a USB to MIDI card or something, this would also be where that appears. 
Uh, but if it doesn't appear, it's just options, preferences, and then you click into MIDI devices, you may have to enable it. So where it says MIDI outputs, you can just need to click on it and go enable output. But now when we press play, we can hear our time code, and the reason is because of that is because we haven't changed it from LTC to MIDI. So if you right click on your time code generator, go source properties, you just need to change it to LTC, make sure your start time is zero, and then click play, and you'll hear nothing. Except your music when it kicks in. So let's go across to MA and we'll do its side of configuration. So, Grand MA2, here we are. Uh, this is a totally blank show file. We may have created a timecode at some point while I was setting up. So let's, let's completely load a new show, just to avoid confusion. So we'll load a new time show, we won't save this one. First thing we need to do is we need to set up where it's getting our MIDI from. So, on a console, by default, the, the way of getting MIDI in, if you're using MIDI, you don't have to do this because there's no way of configuring USB MIDI on a desk. It just works. But on an on-PC system, you need to click on the little green yellow circle Go Options, go to MIDI, and then just select your MIDI in device to be what you want it to be. So in our case, it's the Loop BE internal MIDI. The output doesn't need to be set to anything because all we're doing is sending MIDI, but for routing reasons, I always like to set the ins and the outs. If you were using the MIDI in from the physical connectors on the back of the on-PC wing, you would just have to click Yes here, and then it would be using those. So... Let's set up a little bit of a timecode view for us. So the first thing we'll do is we'll bring in our clock, size it, stick it down here, and we'll set it to timecode. Now the clock isn't really required. I like to have the clock on views that I don't have my full timecode view, but we'll run through all bits of the timecode here anyway. So the next thing we're going to need is obviously our timecode viewer, which is where all your cues and stuff will be. And then we need to grab our pools. So we go pools, timecode pool. And then we also, if you want the slots, you can also do the slot timings. And the slot timings will show you which slot you're connected to. Now the timecode slots is something new to 3.1. And the way to define what the slots do is you need to go into setup, go to network configuration, select either a console or an on PC system, and where it says MIDI TC or SMPTE TC, this is where you're defining that information. So if you wanted to bring it in on let's say slot 8 rather than by default slot 2 for SMPTE, that's where you, sorry, it would be slot 1 for SMPTE and slot 2 for TC. Yeah, that's correct. Then, once that's done, we can go back to our nice screen and we can roll our time code. So let's drop into our combined view here. And we'll play back and we'll see what we get. Now see that we don't have any time code running in uh, MA. Let's just kill this song for a sec. Uh, we don't have any content running in MA um, it's only on slot 2, so you actually need to select slot 2 before you start recording. Once you do that, you've got your clock. And then if we were to store an empty time code in here, and select it, and bind it to slot 2, we would then have time code running. And as we can see, it says MIDI time code is running. That's how you set up time code uh, on an MA2 3.1 system. Check back with us very shortly for our follow-up video which covers programming with MIDI. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment and welcome to 2016.